Good morning. This is day 31 of the Prayers in Perspective, a Morning Pause for Lent. If you'd like to follow along, prayers are from the Book of Common Prayer, pages 76, 79, and 80. So let us begin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. The first, first book of John, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart, and we've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For, your, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, had mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Now, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We now have, now have a reading from The Contemplative Heart by James Finley on his pages 24 and 25. We ask, how is it possible to live a contemplative life, way of life in the midst of today's world? In response, we are invited back into the intimate domain of our own experience of traveling along the path of everyday life in which everything appears to be nothing more than it appears to be, when suddenly, without warning, the ground beneath our feet is mystery. The gossamer veil of appearances dissolves in an ever so subtle, ever so overwhelming realization that the present moment is unexplainably more than it appears to be. Without warning, we find ourselves falling into the abyss of star-strewn sky or find our heart impaled by a child's laughter or the unexpected appearance of the beloved's face. Without warning, we lose our footing in the silence, broken and in, bre in the breaking, deepened by the slash of a frog we did not know was there. What is extraordinary about such moments is that nothing beyond the ordinary is present. It's just a starlit night, a child at play. It's just the primal stuff of life that was unexpectedly broken through the mesh of opinions and concerns that all too often hold us in their spell. It's just the life in the immediacy of the present before thought begins. Here in this unforeseen defenselessness is granted the contemplative experience, however obscure it might be, that we are the cosmic dance of God, that the present moment, just the way it is, is already in its deepest actuality, the fullness of union with God we seek. Here, like the wind that blows where it pleases, is granted, however fleetingly, that firestorms of wonderment, that turning inside out of all values, that is at once the poverty and the grandeur of the contemplative way. Well, let's take a moment to reflect. How do moments of unexpected beauty and mystery in your everyday life offer glimpses into the contemplative experience? Let us end this by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.